what God has spoken to me for you today. And I had been praying for you even before I came in here. You know, we meet here at 1. Everybody was touching the chairs, praying over exactly where you're sitting right now. Because I pray this over you today. I pray that God breaks you free of every single stronghold, every single chain, everything that has bound you that you did not even realize you were being bound by. But today I believe the Holy Spirit is going to shine the light, and I believe that he is going to revelate to you something that's been there all along, holding you down and holding you back in bondage, and today is the day you're going to walk into freedom. Is that okay with y'all? Shout amen. Amen. Amen, amen. What if I told you that there is a serial killer that is loose, and the news just said that he's walking on your street? He's prowling. He's looking for the weak. He's looking for access. Everybody say access. 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 Because he's looking for the next victim. My question to you today, is it you? Is it you? And I'm going to describe this in such a way. Do y'all like CSI? Oh, yeah. Y'all do? Okay. This is going to give you some clues of how to stop it, how to block it, and how to recognize it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So here's my question in regards to that. So if you knew that, you knew that this serial killer is walking your street tonight while your family is sleeping, while you're unaware, looking for access, easy access, shout easy access. Easy access. And here he is. He comes to your door, and it's actually not unlocked. It's a jar. It's a jar. Y'all make it real easy for him. See, many of you don't even realize it, and you've done that. You've done that. I'm going to show you how you've done it. Because Satan crept in unaware while you sat in your easy chair, kicked back. You didn't know anything was going on. And here he walked in right behind you while your children slept. While you were oblivious, he walked in. So here's what happened. What left the door ajar? What was it? Do y'all want to know? Do y'all want to know? I, I, I can't hear you. Yes, ma'am. You do? Okay. Here's what it is. The door was left open by unforgiveness. Y'all are waiting for something like really profound, but you're going to see just how powerful, how powerful unforgiveness can be in inhibiting you and in locking you up in chains. And see, here's the thing, and is it okay? You know, I like to preach and be transparent. It's not easy, but uh, I might say some things today, and y'all go, oh my gosh, she struggles. Wow, okay. So is it okay if I'm real with y'all today? Is it okay? Well, here we go. So I was guilty of that. I left the door ajar in my life, in my personal life, and here's how I did it. Um, and y'all know I just finished my, my first book I authored, and it's called Push Through It. It's a Seth Hanchy story. But here's the thing. There's a chapter in there, and that chapter is called God Help me forgive. And the subtitle in parentheses is actually the prison of unforgiveness. And baby, it is a prison. It is prison. And some of you have been locked inside and you did not even know that you were not aware. There was something inside of you that said this is not living. Something's wrong. That, that oppression that you feel, that anxiety. I'm believing that today God is going to open your eyes spiritually maybe naturally, but you're going to see some things that maybe you didn't realize were there that was holding you back, and it's because you have the authority to get rid of it. But again, it's going to be up to you. I'm just going to give you the keys. Is that good? Yeah. That's good? That's good. Okay. So my title today is actually the same title as that chapter in the book, and it is God Help Me. Forgive. And I want you to say that right now as almost a prayer, and then I'm going to pray for you. Say that loud. Say, God, God help, me help me forgive. One more time. God, God help me forgive. forgive. Yes. So let's pray right now. Put your hand on your hand. Father, clear my mind. I want to hear every single word, every distraction, I cast it down. I need this word, and I need to be free. Not part of the way, all the way. 
Amen. Now take your neighbor, say free indeed. Free indeed. Free indeed. Take your other neighbor, say I'm free indeed. As of today, right? So in that chapter, I talk very honestly, very transparently about my struggle personally that I went through. My struggle was um, that the book is about what I went through with my son, Seth. And uh, it's available on Amazon right now. Hi, iBooks, Apple, all of that. So, but here's the thing. That struggle I had, I had a long list, a really long list of reasons that justify the book, yeah. why I held so tightly with clenched fists to unforgiveness. And it wasn't just unforgiveness. It was hate. Y'all, it was yeah. hate. Yeah. It was bitterness. And let me tell you some of the things on my list. I'll just share some of that with you. One of the things that was like really hard for me was knowing like the very next day she was driving her van that hit my son to get it fixed. She took it to a body shop. Would that make y'all mad? Just a little bit? As I sit in the ICU waiting room, there were never calls saying I'm sorry. There was no card. There was no flowers. Five months later, when we came home from the hospital, there was no casserole. There was nothing. There was nothing that indicated there was an ounce of remorse. Not a little bit, not knowing. And I sit there, and all that did is, you know, when something bad happens, we have to point a finger. We have to assign blame somewhere, right? And that might be someone that hurt you, someone that, something bad that happened to you. And it might have been something that you may have been part of, but we have to, in human nature, find a reason, even if it's not one that makes sense. And that is exactly what I did. And all this did was build bars around my life of a prison. And here's what the enemy is so good at doing. Satan is really slick, dude. I mean, this, this sucker is slick. Because he would climb in and he would tell me one more reason I should hate him. Right. Yeah. Now see, the Holy Spirit would be dealing yeah. with me because, y'all, I'm Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm not just a Christian. Here I am as a co-pastor, and I'm I'm struggling yeah. beneath the makeup. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling beneath my cute church clothes and my shout and my worship. Come on, yeah. Come on. yeah. And nobody knew that I was so bound, but I knew. Come on. I knew. But I just wasn't willing to let go of it yet. And Satan climbed in right there because all there was was silence from them. There was nothing ever spoken. There was yeah. nothing ever sent. It was just silence. Mm -hmm. Silence. Satan right then crept in. Y'all, he's sneaky. Yeah. He crept in your life. He snuck into where the silence was. And in that space of silence, he began to fill his own narrative. And I never met the lady. All I knew is what had been going over in my emotions. Y'all, your emotions will lie to you. Yes, well, your emotions on. don't have a brain, but it's got a big mouth. Come on. Don't it? Come on. So here I was, and Satan had climbed into my space because the door was the door was wide open. It wasn't just a little bit, it was all the way up. And he crept in and he sat down right beside me in my easy chair. He even poured himself a cup of coffee, propped his muddy feet up on my table. And we had a conversation. And he's real good at being a prosecuting attorney. He's real good at building a case to justify why you feel the way you feel. Come on. Oh, he's an expert. Come on. But here I was. As he justified it, I was the one that every bar was getting put up one by one by one until I was completely, completely in a prison, completely in a cell of my own doing. Right. And here's what I believe. This is the thing. I held on to this, and you know, most of my church people are hearing this for the first time. If you read the book, you've heard it already. But I held on to it for years, y'all. I'm talking about I couldn't release it. And the reason, in part, that I held so tightly right. is maybe something that you can say done it too. I get it. I get it, Pastor. I get it. I held on tightly because in part, I thought, I believed, if I let it go, if I let my bitterness go, my anger go, if I forgave her and released her, it would be saying, it wasn't that bad. 
You're not guilty of anything. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We cool. That's why I held on so tightly. Maybe that's something that y'all have been doing. Exactly. And you don't even realize you've been justified leaving your door ajar. Come on. And there's muddy footprints in your house exactly. going to your children's room, going to your money, going to your happiness, going to your health, your sound mind. You wonder Come as on. you trace the tracks, never knowing well, how do we get them out of here. You clean it up, you think you got it all fixed, and then boom, the very next day, there's more tracks. Come on. What have you been leaving your door ajar to? What have you been doing? So here I am. Satan's convinced me that my unforgiveness is punishing her. Y'all, unforgiveness don't punish the other person. It punishes yourself. That's right. That's right. right. Well, See, here I was. I was in a prison. She was not. I was. I was. And Satan is so sneaky because there would be times that I would go through the process of saying, you know, oh, Lord, you know, I, I want to be free. Let me forgive her. Yeah. But I always held on just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Not fully releasing all of it. Just a little. And that's all you need is just a crack in the door. And he can write, open it up, walk on through it right there. That's right. And so here it is. Say to come back, he'll remind you of what they said when you're over. Now you can be in, in like in Walmart and the thought will come back. Yeah. Yeah. You can be sitting in your chair, you can be reading your Bible. Yeah. 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 Right. And all of a sudden, right. the right. enemy will play back like an old funky dirty movie. Uh -huh. He presses play on his DVR that oh. never goes away uh -huh. and he reminds you of what they did, yeah. of what they said, yeah. of how they hurt you. Yeah. All of the memories, thought by thought, memory by memory, and here you are getting more and more locked up. Right. So now you're not only in a prison cell, but now he's got you in a straitjacket of chains. Oh, yeah. You look like Houdini can't even get you out of there. Come on. You are locked up, bound, toe to head, bound completely. Have you been wondering? What's going on? You've been wondering what's wrong? I don't know, but I'm believing this. I'm believing the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to me unless he wants to speak to Amen. me. Amen. So some of you have been knowing it but not realizing what the root of it is. And so here it is, the chains of angerness, the chains of bitterness, anxiety. Hello, anybody? Come Depression, on. trouble sleeping. Hello, anybody? Come on. Come on. Right? 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 Mad all the time and you don't know why. You ain't got a good reason for flying off the handle, but that memory just swept in like the wind blew, didn't it? Caught you off guard. And all of a sudden you're in a, excuse me, pissy mood and uh, you don't know why. Uh, right. Come on. You don't even know why. Y'all don't play today. Yeah. You can choose. See, today you have a choice. The Bible even says, set before you this day is a choice. You can choose life or you can choose death. I'm setting before you a choice. Not my choice, but God is saying I'm setting before you a choice. Do you choose life? Do you choose death? Not that you're just going to kill over, baby, but you would live your life in the middle of a graveyard. Always talking about what should have been, what could have been, what they did, what they didn't do. Come on. You will die there. Your relationships will die there. Your happiness will die there. Your sound mind, your physical body will be affected. It will die there. You allowed Satan to put a chain on you and a limit on you, tie you up, bind you to a tombstone. Come on. Right, my God. Get up today. Yes. I'm going to shout. Y'all tell your neighbor right now, get up. Get yeah. up. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank Say it one more time on. so the other person didn't hear you. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Shout get up. it to our social media people today. Get, get up. up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. See, my hating her didn't take one minute off of her life. Yeah. But it took a lot off of mine. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You're hating them, him. Her, whoever, is not stealing a moment of breath, a moment of happiness from them, but it is stealing so much more from you. Come on. Every day you pack it around on you. You put them on your back and you walk around through your life and you wonder why there's a spirit. Shot spirit. Spirit. Spirit of heaviness because unforgiveness has all kinds of partners. He got a gang. They got all kinds of thugs coming up in your house. 
It's not one yeah. thing. It's one thing that opens the door to many. That's what it is. See, unforgiveness is like this. It's like you're drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. Who's crazy? Mm. Who is, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Not a lick. But you've been doing it. Every time you talk about it. Every time you, you think about it. Isn't it funny how we'll get over it? We pray and God removes it. And then all of a sudden, that somebody, well thingy, is going to say, Oh, guess who I seen the other day? Uh, uh, They're going to call uh, you. They're going to put it on Facebook, a picture uh, with old oh, boo boo, with no boo boo. And you're going to see it, and something inside of you is just going to resurrect all those dead bones. Uh, and here you are, on. back in the graveyard. Yeah. Here you are. Oh, they look so happy. You have no idea Dude, the yeah. hell and misery anybody goes through. Come on. We don't know what you're going through. Come on. You don't know what I'm going through because we don't put it on glass, do we? No. We love to fake it. Oh. Yeah. We love to fake it. That's why Facebook needs to be called fake book because that's what it is right there. Fake book. Amen. None of it's real. That's right. Amen. Everything is photoshopped. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6, 15. Matthew 6, 15. Amplified classic version. But, shout but. 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 If you do not. Now, hey, this is red letter right here. Jesus is talking. Y'all better listen extra, okay? But, shout it again. But. But, but if you do not forgive others, their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins. I said willful. They did it on purpose. Maybe they didn't. Most likely they did. Yeah, that's right. Their reckless and willful sin, leaving them, shall leaving them. Leaving them. Letting them go, shall letting them go. Letting them go. Giving up resentment, shall Giving yeah. up resentment. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? What? It was. It was. Because if you don't leave them, you're carrying them around on your back. If you don't let them go, they're going to walk with you through your life every single place you go, every relationship, every decision. They're with you Come because on. you're carrying them around. Come on. Not, you're refusing to let them go. The resentment, giving up the resentment. If you have resentment towards them, you're carrying them around with you. Yeah. Shout it again. Let them go. Let them go. Here's the part I want you to really pay attention to right here. This is where God called me out. Yeah. Don't y'all let it when it happens? Don't you? Well, I don't. <laughs> y'all lie. I'm I ain't going to lie about it. I mean, I'm glad God cares about me that much, but it don't feel good when he's tanning your behind, does it? When he's tanning my behind real good. Because the last part of this verse really spoke to me. And we'll start from the top one more time and read it all the way through this time. But, Kimber, but, put your name there, if you do not forgive others, if you don't forgive me, you know who that person is right now. You put their name there. So let's make it personal. But, Kimber, if you don't forgive that old lady that hit your son. You don't forgive others. Their trespasses. Their reckless, willful sins. Leaving them. Letting them go. Giving up resentment. Neither. Shout neither. Neither. Shout it again. Neither. Neither, neither will your father. Jesus. God forgive your trespasses. Mm. So God, you're telling me that I can't hold it against her anymore? What you're, you're saying, is that saying that my that it's okay that I feel this way? It's okay that I got broken? It's okay that my son's speech got taken, that he has a brain injury? It's okay that he's paralyzed on the right side? It's okay that he's using diapers again at the age of 17? That's okay? No, daughter, it's not okay. But it's going to be okay. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It look like you thought it was going to look. Maybe your life turned... Uh, a 180. <laughs> Maybe it did. Maybe it did. But God has got you. Yes, yes. Lord. And the proof is right now. This word, he's saying something. Thank today. you, Jesus. You know, here's the thing. Are you going to let them go? Or are you going to keep carrying them around? My God. So see, I got called out. The Holy Spirit had to come to Jesus meeting with me on the spot right there. Right? With the red letters that spoke to me. For real. Can anybody relate? Y'all yeah. had to come to Jesus meet with the Holy Spirit? What, nobody there can do with the Lord? Yeah. Amen? It don't feel good, does it? Yeah. Talk about things being put in perspective. Yeah. That was an end of my pity part. It was over. I couldn't 
you know, walk around anymore feeling sorry for myself. I couldn't, I couldn't justify it anymore how bad everything was. It really put a stop to that. Just threw a damper there. But I wanted to let all my anger go. See, here's the thing. I wanted to let it go. I wanted to let the bitterness go. I, I wanted to be obedient to God's word. I hear you loud and clear, God. I see it on the paper. I hear you. But God, I need your help. Yes. God, help me to forgive. Some of you need to ask that very thing. God, help me. Help me forgive them. And so I prayed that simple prayer. And you know how God loves to take it up extra. You know, it's always over. He's an overachiever and he wants us to do the overachieving. So here it is. So this is the next scripture that really got me good. Y'all ready for it? Because it's going to get you. You ready? So here's the rest of the instructions. Luke 6, 28. Luke 6, 28. This is in the Revised Geneva Translation. Bless! Shout bless. 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 Y'all need to say I think blessed. Okay. Bless those who curse you. But what? Now are you sure, God? And do what? And pray. Shout pray. Pray. Who for who? My friend, the person I love, my betrothed, my beloved, my honey, my boo, my money. No, pray for those who hurt you. Yeah. How do I forgive something so unforgivable? How, how, God, help me. How do I do that? And here's the very next thing he showed me. Y'all be careful when you ask a question and you're very serious about it. Be very careful because he will talk to you. Sometimes we go, no, 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 because we don't want to see it. We don't want to hear it. But he spoke loud and clear to me. Here's the very next thing. Here it is. Luke. 23, 32 through 34. This is Christ, Jesus. The skull, the place of the skull. They nailed him to a cross. And the criminals were also crucified. One on his right, one on his left. That was us. That was us. We were guilty. We were guilty. He said this. This is what I want you to hear. Verse 34. Jesus said, as he called me out one more time, Father, forgive them. Kimber, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They're being led by the spirit of Satan or by their own brokenness. They don't know what they're doing. Kimber, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's hard, y'all. No, that's hard. Do you want to believe that they plotted, they schemed, and they planned it? Maybe they did, but what broke them to break you? And I say this often, who did you break? Who's holding unforgiveness against you because you did whatever X, Y, Z to them? Come on. Let's all get real here, right? Let's level the playing field. Let's be honest with one another because you cannot move into freedom until you are first honest with yourself. All right, right now, the spotlight, the Holy Spirit's got it like right over you. So you know you were out of line, just like you got pulled over by the police officer in the middle of the night. It's shining right your eyeballs right now, isn't it? Because the word will do that. It will revelate things to you because it is the will of God for us to walk into complete, total, absolute freedom. Hallelujah. Not misery, not bound by chains that we try to quiet with a drink or a drug or a man or a woman. God is too great for that. He wants us to be Amen. free. Yes. He wants us to be free indeed. Amen? Amen. 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 So the process of the crucifixion is like this. Let me just give you just a little peek right there. The process of the crucifixion. First of all, it was the worst way to die. Yes. Because it didn't just like, boom, cut your head off. They're done at the guillotine. I mean, you're finished. It's over. This was excruciating, and it was long. It took days for most people to die. They would hammer the nails between this bone here, nailing their arms fillet open. Before Jesus ever got there, they said he didn't even look like a human. He was beat so badly. I want you to understand, he could hold this all against you. Each one of us, each one of us. He was beat so badly that he was unreckonable as a human being. That's pretty darn bad, isn't it? Yes. 
Then they mocked him. They ripped his clothes off. They gambled at him at the foot of the cross while he lay there vulnerable, all dignity gone. They put a nail between his feet, and it was also like this, right? That the feet were like this, the knees were bent, because what happens is you begin to suffocate. Mm -hmm. So they would push up, and that's why it was a long, agonizing, grueling death. They would eventually, out of mercy, which is odd we would say it that way, but they would break the legs of the person so they couldn't push up any longer. They would just suffocate and die. Here he was bleeding out for you. And he spoke those words, Father, Father, Abba, Father, forgive. Put your name there. Put your name there. They don't know what to do. Forgive them. Forgive them. Matthew 5, 43 through 44 in the Amplified. Matthew 5, 43 through 44. Y'all all right? Yes. Y'all good? Yes. Okay, good, good. I feel like God's just doing the deep work today. Sometimes surgery is deep, isn't it? He's cutting some things out of there and loosing you. 5, 43 through 44 in the Amplified. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor. Well, that's easy, right? Is that easy? Uh -huh. It's easy to love somebody that's nice to you, isn't it? You shall love your neighbor, your fellow man, and hate your enemy. That's what you've heard. But I say to you, okay, what are you saying? It's in red letters. I'm listening. Jesus said, but I say to you, love, that is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And then he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. There are people right now that's coming to your mind. There's events, there's things spoken. And let me tell you how the Romans believe that. I see the, Ro the Romans believe, like probably a lot of us believe, they believe this. They believe because one of the gods, many gods, they worship was actually a goddess. And it was Altio, Altio, U-L-T-I-O, the goddess of vengeance. The goddess of vengeance. Some of y'all have been following her and worshiping her and you didn't even know it. The goddess of vengeance. So they didn't just believe in getting even. They believed in getting even ten times. Ten times more. So in other words, you take from me and I'm going to take from you, but it's going to be way more than what you got from me. You hurt me and I'm going to hurt you extra. Extra. Amen? And then, yeah, some of y'all, if you give me a bird, I'm going to give you double. You know what I'm saying? So it was always more than whatever you gave, they give it back to you. Ten times more. Ten times more. That's all how a lot of us think. Oh, by the way, uh, Jesus follower, y'all keep y'all's bird in the cage, okay? You keep your thug on the leash, okay? You can tell somebody right now, just say keep your keep your bird in the cage now. Tell your other neighbor, keep your thug on the leash. Y'all be acting a fool. Uh-huh. Y'all better not. I don't know about it. The Jewish people believe something similar. And in Exodus 21 and 24, it actually tells us this. It says, they believed an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand, a foot for a foot, blood for blood. That means you do to me, then you're going to have to pay the same price. So they were a little bit more, I, I guess, a little bit less extreme than the Romans. But what most people don't realize about this with us, and let me say it with us, forgiveness sometimes is not a one and done. That's right. It's not like, okay, I'm going to get even and it's over. No, forgiveness is this. You don't think about getting even. Come on. You just say, God, forgive them. Yeah. Forgive them. And here's what I learned, and I, I'll just share this with you. Forgiveness is a process. Yes, there, I did forgive that lady. I did. But it would be times when Seth would be struggling or like when his nursing class graduated that night. He was supposed to be a part of it. He was. We were celebrating. He was writing his name. Again, learning it at 17 years old, 18 years old actually at that time. So, yeah, forgiveness is a process. And when you start to feel it, because you'll feel it, there's some days that it happens and something happens, somebody says something, it reminds you of that same pain and before you know it, you're nursing that wound again, they've been reopened and it comes all those same feelings of anger and, and bitterness and hate towards that same person. And so what do you do when that happens? Do y'all want to know how to handle that? Because I bet y'all all have those days. This is what you do. You do the same prayer again. 
You say, God, help me. Please help me. Forgive. And then you do this. Then you do this. Then you say, God, I pray that you bless them. You bless them. So it's taking it to the next level, right? And I'm not going to lie. That's not easy. That's not easy at first to do, to pray blessing. See, it's, it's a process to pray, God, I forgive me, help me, help me forgive them. But it's even harder when you say, wait, God, now you're telling me I have to pray blessings on them, not just forgive them and let them go. No, you have to pray blessings over them. And that's how you know you're really over it. When you can honestly say, God, bless them. Now, I'm not going to lie, the first time I did it, I was like, God, bless her, you know, just a little tiny bit, just a little bit. But then something inside me said, you're not being honest right now. Do it the way I did it. Bless those that persecute you. Bless them. Bless them. After a couple of years, and yeah, it took some years, um, it would be less and less that I would feel those feelings of anger and bitterness and all that. It wouldn't hit me in the wave anymore, and it didn't consume me any longer. So after a few years, a couple of years, um, there was no residue left of unforgiveness. None. Not any. And what Jesus is telling us here is if you're truly my son and my daughter, then act like me. Yes. Act like me. You show grace even when they don't deserve it. You forgive them even when they don't ask for it. Because they never asked. You love them even when they're unlovable. The same way he loved you when you were crucifying him. That's the same way. Our character most resembles Christ, our Father, when we choose to show undeserved mercy and forgive those that are guilty, shout guilty, guilty, of wounding us. Your prayers for others may or may not change them, but it will always change you. It will always change you. God will show you just how far grace has brought you. See, I thought it was enough that I was over my anger towards her, that I had forgiven her, that I had prayed to bless her. So I'm going to tell you the last little part of the story. Is that okay? Okay, so five and a half years later, so a couple of years after I'd gotten over it and I was done, you know, done that, Seth, uh, after Seth's accident, God woke me up in the middle of the night. I got up. I began to write that chapter that I just spoke of called God Help Me Forgive, The Prison of Unforgiveness. And I am here writing this story, and I'm weeping, and I'm like, this is so beautiful, you know. I'm just really moved by the, the words that God is giving me. And then here's what happened. God spoke to me when I finished the chapter, and he said, I want you to reach out to them. Now, here I am. I'm like, I don't know how to reach out to them. They ain't never reached out to me. Now I have another excuse. <laughs> and then he said, reach out to them. So I, I sent a message on Messenger. Y'all, and I'm like, well, Seth would like to come pray for your mother today. And give her peace. It sin, and I was like, "Well, I did it, Lord. I, you know, the burden is off of me." And within ten minutes, they got back with me and said, "We would love for Seth to come meet Mom and to pray for her." We go there to this house, walk in. Here's a lady I demonized. You know, because I built this, remember, Satan helped me build this really good case against her of how horrible, how evil, how cold-blooded, horrible person she was. I walk in, her elderly son and daughter-in-law, which they were older than me, are now taking care of her. She is fully. Now, this is the prayer I prayed for, y'all. Prayed for vengeance. I prayed for her to feel what it was like to have her dignity taken away, for people to have to feed her, change her diaper. She couldn't get up and do anything. She was in that situation because she was in the latter stages of Alzheimer's. She lay in a diaper, in a recliner. She could not get up by herself. She could not do anything. She was lucid for a moment when they explained, this is a young man that you ran over and he died and all of this stuff. And Seth is standing there holding this lady's hand who wrecked his life. I'm standing on the other side, and I am weeping, watching this embodiment of grace. Because I said, that's how God must look at us. Or like that. So here he is holding her hand. And he is telling her as she turns and looks at him and says, oh, I'm so, so sorry. And he is patting her hand, and he says, fine, look at me. All God, all God, I'm strong. 
this hair prays for this woman. This is the top of the hair. Two weeks later, she passed away, knowing she was her dream. Given Y'all, it might be hard for some of you actually to go through a process and let someone know that they're forgiven, that they're released. Why? Because you need it. You need it just as bad as they did. Right. By refusing to forgive them, not only are you carrying the pain they cause with you wherever you go, but you are filtering every single relationship through that hurt, through that pain. And in a way, you're allowing them to be included in every area of your life. And without even knowing it, you're basically living your life as a memorial in honor of him. Think about that. Think about that. Because you're going through everything from that point, from that aspect of they hurt you and what they did to you. So I want you to tell your neighbor right now, it's time to let them go. It's time. It's time. Amen. So who do you need to release today? Well, let me ask it this way. Who or what is living in your mind and in your emotions, rent-free, occupying space that you need freed up for joy, for happiness, for peace? Colossians 3.13 says this. Colossians 3.13. Don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. If you feel someone has wronged you, forgive them. Forgive others because just as the Lord forgave you. That word forgiven was four times in one verse right there. See, I don't know what you've been forgiven of, but I can tell you what I've been forgiven of. I, I was not, you know, this perfect person that did nothing wrong before God saved me. I was a sinner. I was a liar. Y'all even shoplifted. I told my mama this the other day. I shoplifted. Yes, I did. It was a 35. Y'all remember the little little bitty records? Was that 35 or 45, mama? 45. 45. From TGY, Lord Jesus. You have to I can't believe I'm telling y'all this. And um, I shoplifted in Elk John's Philadelphia Freedom. I know. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know, Jason. I don't know. But yeah, that's one thing in your life. That's not bad. That was bad enough. There was a whole lot of other things I did. But I ain't telling y'all that. Y'all like to <laughs> Nope. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. It is under the blood. Praise God. <laughs> but here's the thing. Even after I got saved, I still struggled. I struggled with lying. I struggled with, with lust. I struggled with everything that you struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Y'all don't play with me right now. Y'all need to. What are you struggling with? What has God forgiven you of? Y'all following the point here, right? So let's do it this way. Did someone hurt you? Someone hurt someone you love? Pray for them. That's what the Bible says. Pray for them. Did someone take advantage of you or someone you love? Pray for them. Did someone lie about you? Pray for them. Did someone abuse you? Pray for them. Here's the hard one. Did someone molest you? Did someone rape you? Pray for them. Forgive them. Let it go. Because forgiving someone won't change what happened, but it will change you. And I want to leave you with this. And I want to give y'all a tool. And I like doing that to make it something that you can actually do. Not preach to have if you can do something actively involved. That person that the Holy Spirit has shown to you during this message, has anybody had somebody come into their mind? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So whoever that person is, whatever they said, whatever they did, whatever you've been carrying around with you for years or months or weeks, whatever it is, I want you to do something because this is going to help you. I did it myself in the past, and it helped me to let go because it was something I was actually taking part physically doing. Um, today or sometime this week, get you a piece of paper out. Write it down. I know you like using your phone. It's better if you use paper. Trust me, it works better. But get you a piece of paper out. Write a letter. Yeah. Write a letter, not of accusation, but of grace. Mm -hmm. You don't need to accuse anymore. You need to forgive. Mm -hmm. Write a letter of grace. 
address it to that person, put their name at the top to so and so, and then begin to write. You may have to do this two, three, four times until the letter is actually one of grace, and not of that pain and that bitterness spilling out all over the pages. When you write this letter, you can put a stamp on it, you mail it to them, or whatever you can deliver it. No, don't do that. Um, but you can, you can also just tear it up, throw it in the garbage. This is something that you have to do for you, right. not for them, for you. So that's going to be up to you, which I decided to do. But today you got to let them go. You, do do y'all agree? Yeah. Today you got to let them go. Yeah. Are you going to let them go, or are you going to walk out of the church today and just say, "Okay, come on, baby, let's go," and put them on your back again? Right. It's time to let it go. Amen. 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 So I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to pray. I want everybody to. See. Stand up. It's going to be a little bit different clothes. Um, it's something I felt led to do, and I'm going to be obedient. So I'm going to pray right now for you, but I'm praying for your enemy. Is that okay? Y'all can pray silently, or if y'all, if I say something and it's like really hard and it's stepping on your toes, you can say amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. So everybody, bow your head, every eye closed. Those of you watching, of course, we want you to follow along as well. Um, and then let's do this. Let's do what he has commanded us to do. Let's let them go. Let's release them. Let's release all the anger and the bitterness and pray for our enemies today. Pray that we bless them. Pray that God blesses them. So God, we ask you right now, first of all, foremost, saturate our lives. With your Holy Spirit, with your power, your mind, God, because we need your strength to do this more than I need to. Send your love flowing through us. Let us be the vessel of grace, the vessel of mercy. Let us let go and forgive every single thing that we've been holding on to. Anything that's hindering our prayers, because you know, guys, it hinders your prayers. Let us be the vessel of mercy, the vessel of grace that represents. You, you follow. Let us show what you showed us. Let us give to them what you gave to us. We release, I want you right now in your mind to say, I release and say their name in your mind. You can just say it in your head or whisper it. I release them. I forgive them. I'm letting go of unforgiveness. I'm letting go of thoughts of revenge. I'm letting go of the hateful emotions that are quenching my spirit. I'm letting it go, God. I'm making the choice today. Give me wisdom right now. Give me wisdom as I seek how to bless my enemy. How I seek how to love my enemy. And God, help me pray blessings on them. And we pray for you right now, Father. I pray to you right now. Bless my enemy. God, just say that. Bless my enemy. You know who it is. Bless them. You see their name. Let their hearts be exposed to your glory, to your grace, so that you can draw them in close to you and you can save them. You can save them like you saved me. Lord, even when we can't see anything changing, nothing looks different in our enemy, nothing, they're not acting any different, but God, don't let us waver. Don't let us waver even when we feel like they're not remorseful. Because I know I may be waiting on an apology that will never come. And if it doesn't, I still forgive them. I still release them. And God, help me remember, last of all, your grace, which you forgave me from, that I didn't deserve. You forgave me. You loved me even before I asked. Proved it on Calvary. Yes. God, where would I be without you? Where would you be without his grace, his mercy, his love for you? <coughs> Think about that right now. And now I'm opening up this altar. And those of you who are watching, I'm going to pray real quick a sinner's prayer. If you're lost, if you're going to hell, look, you're going somewhere. It's your choice. He's already prepared the way, but you've got to accept the way. Do you choose life or do you choose death? Do you choose heaven or do you choose hell? And yeah, you can live in hell even here before you ever get to a lake of fire. 
But Father, right now, forgive me of all my sins. All of my sins in the past. All of my sins that were secrets. Everything I've done in public. All the people I hurt. God, forgive me. And I believe your son, Jesus Christ, died for me on a cross. That my sins could be forgiven. And I could be reconciled with you. Through grace and mercy. And he rose again for me on the third day. So I can be free. Amen. Amen.